So it looks like we were all right about uh, the J.K. Dobbins situation, especially uh, with the video where we talked about it. Just seemed like the Ravens and J.K. Dobbins were in a really, really weird sort of place. Now, um, just to clear some things up, initially there was a report that came out that said J.K. Dobbins was holding in, but nothing said that he was holding in. He never confirmed if he was holding in or not. He never confirmed or even denied if he was dealing with an injury or not. Um, and, and with J.K. Dobbins, if he was to hold in, ah, that would be tough. I just Because his position, we talked about it yesterday, how the running back position is just is devalued now more than ever. And teams feel like more than ever nowadays, like, oh, you, you want to hold out? Oh, you, you don't want to play? Oh, we can get somebody like you who can do the same things you can do, but for a lot cheaper. So I, I don't feel like holding in would be the best thing for J.K. Dobbins to do had he been a quarterback, they, they hold out, that, that changes everything. Even a wide receiver, in some instances a tight end, offensive lineman, defense, but running back is just a position where it just don't hit the same like it used to. And, and J.K. Dobbins obviously got all the skill in the world. He can play, he can ball, but even if we look at his situation specifically with the Baltimore Ravens, it's tough, man. And, and and I feel for him, too, because he want to get his bread, man. He said it in an interview that he had uh, on WJZ with Mark Viviano. He talked about and This is something that we knew was going on already based off of the tweets. We, know, we knew the tweets that he was putting out there. It wasn't no coincidence. But he talked about, he said, hey, I love Baltimore. I love the city. I love the fans. I would love to stay here for my whole career. But I don't know if that's going to happen. Nobody just tweets that randomly. So there must have been some conversations about the business side. And that is something that J.K. Dobbins, he did confirm. He said he's been dealing with the business side. And then he just reiterated what he said in those tweets. He just he said it with his words. He said, hey, I, I love the city. I love the fans. I, I want to be here. But the business side is tough. He referenced Lamar Jackson in his situation. Uh, and how it just, it wasn't always pretty, because it wasn't. There were some times with, with, with Lamar Jackson, it got really, really ugly. It, it, it turned into this, this little back and forth, almost this mini war between Lamar Jackson and the Baltimore Ravens until they finally reconciled their differences. They both compromised, and they came to an agreement. But there were some times when it wasn't looking so good, man. It really wasn't looking so good. I remember somebody in the comment section, they were like, oh, we, we, we felt the same way. In the video where we talked about it, it felt like the Ravens and J.K. Dobbins were in a really weird place. Somebody in the comment section would say, well, we, we, we felt the same thing about Lamar Jackson uh, going into this offseason. And look how that turned out. And I say, well, yeah, because they were in a weird place. They were in a very weird place because we remember like one of the biggest things was the, the John Harbaugh presser. The John Harbaugh presser, I think it was his pre-draft presser, I think. I forgot which one it was. But it's like as soon as John Harbaugh went live, as soon as he started talking, as soon as that presser started, that's when Lamar dropped the bombshell. Oh, I want to be traded from the Ravens. And oof. It was scary. It, it, it was very scary. But um, we're glad how everything worked out. Now, with J.K. Dobbins, will everything work out the same way? Will there be that same resolution like Lamar Jackson got with the Ravens but for J.K. Dobbins? Right now, I, uh, I honestly don't see it right now. Now, I didn't see it initially with Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, but this is a much different situation. Because teams ain't looking at quarterbacks like, oh, we can find, well, actually some of them can sometimes, but depending on the quarterback, but a lot of teams ain't looking at a quarterback like, hey, well, we can find somebody else to replace you for much cheaper and get that same production. But at least the Ravens ain't looking at Lamar like that. They, they, I'm glad they didn't look at Lamar like that. I was thinking sometimes they were going to, but they didn't. So that was good. Um, but with J.K. Dobbins... Like And I didn't even realize until I read uh, Jameson Hensley's article about it yesterday where he said that J.K. Dobbins actually has missed more games than he's played 
in his career. I didn't. I did not even realize that. And again, you 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 just feel for J.K. Dobbins because he's in such a tough spot because the position he plays, teams ain't like they ain't going all out for running backs like that no more like they used to. Le'Veon Bell, hey, I, he was a trendsetter. He was really trying to shift that, really trying to change the game. Uh, and he did a little bit when he got that deal with the Jets and whatnot. But he he really with the Steelers, he really tried. And Steelers, they just they like no, we ain't going for it. Uh, Saquon Barkley is currently trying right now, um, and there was a report that came out that the, the the Giants had offered him a deal worth up to 14 mil per year. Um, obviously, we got to get like the backstory and all that, and it's the details of the contract if that's even accurate. So, but he's trying, he's trying, because running back is a very very tough market for them. It's a tough market for them because. Nobody wants to pay running backs like that. They'll draft them. They even draft them in the first round. Bijan Robinson, there was another running back that got drafted in the first round, too. I forgot his name. My apologies. But they'll draft them. They'll draft them in the first round, second round, third round. They'll draft them whenever. But when it comes to paying them, Zeke got paid. He, he was the highest paid running back in the league. And he got cut. Ty Gurley, he was the highest running back, highest paid running back in the league at one time. And he got cut. Dalvin Cook, one of the best running backs in the league. He's a free agent. He got cut. So the position is is just, it's not, it doesn't get treated how it used to. Teams don't hold the same value at running back that they used to. So that's why for J.K. Dobbins, his situation is very, very hard. It's, it's, it's extremely hard because he's in a tough position on a team that likes to run the ball, no doubt. But they do a lot of running back by committee. Now, another reason it makes it so tough for him is because of the injuries that he's suffered in the past and possibly something he's going through right now. I'm not sure. We don't know. But even if, if he is or if he isn't dealing with an injury right now, I mean, training camp is six weeks away, so we'll see then. But with J.K. Dobbins, um, it really did seem like, and we talked about this before, it seemed like Ravens were getting ready to be like, all right, J.K. Dobbins, here. It's all yours. In 2021, it seemed like that. Because he got drafted, what, 2020? Yeah, second round in 2020 he got drafted, I believe. Um and he showed some stuff that year. But then it seemed like, all right, like, hey, JK, here you go. Do your th- hey, take off, my friend. Go do what you about to do. Uh, but then the Commanders preseason game started still playing. First series, by the way. Very, very beginning of the game. First series, first drive, offensive line all playing together for the first time in the preseason. And a block was missed by the center, Bradley Bozeman, I believe, and that was a wrap for J.K. Dobbins. Took him out for the year. And it it really seemed like that was going to be the year where he was the guy. Really did. But he didn't get that that opportunity. Never got it. And then, as we know, last year he came back a little late, then he came back, and he looked solid, but he just ain't look all the way himself. And then he had a clean-up surgery, then he came back, and he looked a lot better, looked a lot more confident. Uh, and John Harbaugh had said during the season when he got that surgery, he said J.K. wanted that surgery because J.K. didn't feel like he was the J.K. Dobbins that we all know and love. He said he didn't feel like he was himself, so he wanted that surgery. So he got it, and again, he, he looked better. He looked better when he came back. But um, he still wasn't all the way back. But just the, the, the injuries have, um, the injuries mixed with the market, just they make this so tough for J.K., and I feel for him big time because we know what he can do. We know what he can do. And then on top of that, too, another reason he's in such a tough position The offense is expected to make significant changes. It's expected to go a lot more in the direction of passing more than running more. And we'll see. Again, my hope is that it's a game-by-game basis. Whatever's working, hey, keep at it. Whatever's working. 
But with the the, the shift in the, the the possible shift in direction of the offense, that could play a role too. Somebody brought up in the comment section, they they did talk about the shift in the offense, but they talked about with J.K. Dobbins, also him sharing the backfield. With the, the, the combination of a shift in offense and him sharing the backfield, all that happening at the same time is just not, it, it, it's killing his leverage, man. It kills any leverage that he would have if he were to hold out or even hold in, which I don't think he is doing, but uh, we don't know. So I just, he's he just in such a tough position, man. With all of those things that are going on, the market of running backs, the the, the Ravens, how they do running backs right now. Well, not how they do running backs, but just where they are at at running back right now and how they've been. It's been running back by committee. And then with the new offense and with the, the injuries and then with him sharing the backfield and with the, just, it's just a bad combination for him right now. So, in my opinion, I'm no expert, as y'all know. But in my opinion, the best thing that J.K. Dobbins could do, the best thing is go out there and show out. That, that is the best thing J.K. Dobbins could do. Go out there this year, it's contract year, and A, I can't, I can't, I can't tell somebody, hey, don't think about next year. Don't think about the future. Because of course you're going to be thinking about the future. It's a business. It's business. In this business, because a lot of times you don't even know your future. So you don't know what's going to happen next year, next, not even next week sometimes. But for J.K. Dobbins, I think the best thing that he could possibly do, go out there and ball out. Do what you can do. Make the most of every opportunity. Because who knows, the opportunities may not come as frequently as he hopes. They may not, especially with him sharing the backfield. But go out there and go do your thing and whether it ends up being with the Ravens or whether it ends up being with another team next year, go play for that contract. Play for that contract and show not only the Ravens, but show the NFL why you still feel like you deserve some good money. Show them. That, that's all you can do. Because, again, it's, his situation is so tough. But I, I really do hope it works out for him uh, big time. Because, again, we, we know he can play. That, that ain't an issue. That ain't a question. That ain't nothing right there. But now it's about, all right, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next health-wise? And then what's going to happen next contract-wise? So we'll see how it goes. But anyway, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I, lo I love y'all so much. Um, and I, I hope y'all are just being good to other people. But not only being good to other people, but being good to yourselves too. Make sure you uh, take time out for yourself to just reflect just be appreciative of everything and, and everybody in your life because that's important man it's really 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 important um and y'all are important so i appreciate y'all hope y'all having a, a great friday um i know yesterday i got a little bit rough with the news unfortunately um it, it just sucks man it, it is it's really sad it's a sad world that we live in that has a lot of sad things going on every single day and we get reminders of those whether it's from people we know whether it's from the news whether it's from tv media social media whether it's from whatever we get so many reminders of all the bad stuff that happens in the world on a daily um that's why i think it's so important to try as best we can to just spread positivity with people try to be good to people try to be nice to people try to encourage people try to make people's days brighter try to make people happy just whatever you can to try to just make somebody be a better version of themselves and be a happier version of themselves because we already get too much negativity as is. I love y'all, though. I appreciate y'all. And we out.